Hey everyone, this is Brad Royball and I am back with another video for Teals. This time we're looking at lab 2.4 and we're actually going over part two for the lab. Um, so the first part that I'm gonna cover uh, that was important that we kind of glossed over in the first part was um, asking the, the player their name at the start of the game and then adding um, a personalized message inside of our original script. So as you can see, um, I already have some stuff already built for this script, so I'm gonna move some of this over just because this second part does get kind of in depth. I wanted to be able to cover everything for you. Um, so I'm just gonna show right here how you wanna add that user's name in. Um, really, we already know this first part right here where we ask what the user's name is, and we're familiar with setting uh, a variable to whatever answer that may be, but the part that is important for this is actually this join excuse me join block right here so you can see I say uh, sorry blank that was not the correct answer this join block allows us to set several different things together um, several different statements and it allows us to sort of build these statements using variables so you can see if I put the player name variable that I've created right here inside of this space and I snap that in I can now say sorry, and then I can add whatever the player's name is. That was not the correct answer. So I'm gonna demonstrate this, and that is definitely incorrect. Go ahead and snap all this together. So now when I click the flag, it's gonna ask me for my name. I'm going to put in my name, which is Bradley. And it's gonna say, sorry, Bradley, that was not the correct answer for two seconds. Um, so that's how you do that part. That is relatively easy. So I'm gonna kind of put this back over here. Um, the section two, of uh, lab 2.4 which we're going to cover right now is modifying the guessing game so that the user can decide the range of possible numbers from which the secret number can be chosen um, this is actually relatively simple what we're going to do is i'm going to separate some of this right now um, we have another ask statement that we're going to tack on right here so after we ask the player their name we're going to say give us the highest possible number to guess for and we're going to wait and then we're setting a variable which i've called here highest number and again, I named that as a variable over here on the left. You can see all these um, to whatever that answer may be. And then I'm saying set our secret number to pick a random number one, two, 10. Here, I'm going to snap in highest number. Now, whatever number they put in, um, I'm going to say, okay, well, you know, instead of setting it from one to 10, set it from one to whatever highest number they have defined. Um, so, and then if I snap that in, Mm, yes, if I snap that in just like that, we now have this highest number. So now it says, I'm going to change this prompt to I'm thinking of a number between one and, and now if I wanted to say this correctly, I could put another join block right here. So I'm going to go ahead and, oh, nope, it's in operators. So I say join. I'm going ahead and copy what I have right here between one and, and then in the second part of it, I'm going to have highest numbers listed. So now I'm gonna put that right there. And it's gonna say, I'm thinking of a number between one and, so I'm gonna say Bradley, and then even the highest possible number to guess for, I'm gonna say 100. And you can see right there on the top right, it's saying I'm thinking of a, high, a number between one and 100. So the next part uh, that we want to do is uh, we want to add code to keep track of how many guesses the player has made. Um, and then we also want to increase the player's chances by telling them whether the guess number is too high or too low instead of just that it's incorrect. So now I'm going to add, um, I'm actually going to keep this right here. And I'm going to put that right here. That was not the correct answer. So. Um, what we want to do is let the user guess over and over again. Um, we know that we have control blocks, so I'm going to put a forever control block. And I'm going ahead and snap all this into the forever block. Um, this allows the user to keep guessing. Again, the part that sort of saves us on this is normally a forever block, which is continue to execute. But if the user does answer correctly, I'm going to stop everything. So in order to tell the user what guess they're on, I'm going to say make a variable. Um, I'm going to put the variable's name as attempt number, and I'm going to set OK. Um, so the first thing I'm going to do is I want to set this variable to zero when I first start because it may carry over from um, different plays. And I'm going to set it to zero, and instead, actually, I'm going to keep that, and then I'm going to put another set block right here, right inside of my the bottom of my forever loop. And I'm going to set 
the attempt number this time. Actually, I don't even need this. Set attempt number to attempt number plus one. And we're going to use um, the variable name now. So we're going to put attempt number plus one. So now, every single time that I go through this loop and the, the script doesn't get stopped because the user has guessed things correctly, I'm basically incrementing this attempt number with one every single time. So it starts at zero. First time it goes through, if they haven't guessed it correctly and the script hasn't completely stopped, it sets the attempt number to attempt number plus one. And then of course, if it's one, if they guess correctly uh, or incorrectly that second time, it's gonna set attempt number to one plus one, which is two. Um, and then finally, in the last part of the script that we want to set up, and I know this is getting a little bit lengthy, just go ahead and bear with me, is we want to increase the player's chances by telling them whether the guess number is too high or too low. So instead of just guessing, or instead of just having an if statement right here that says the answer is equal to the secret number, what I want to do is add another thing right here. And you know what? I think I'll use an if or an else statement right here to go ahead and make this a little bit easier for me, but I'm gonna put an operator here that basically checks if the number is too high or too low. So here I'm gonna set it saying too high. I'm going to go to my variables. I'm going to get my secret number right here. And I'm going to put it on the right side. And then I'm gonna take the answer. I'm gonna duplicate and I'm gonna say right here, if the answer is greater than the secret number, I want to say, that number is larger than my secret number for two seconds. And if that answer isn't true, I'm gonna say basically the opposite is smaller than my secret number. So if I go ahead and click, click play, we're gonna start, I'm gonna put in my name, Bradley, Give me the highest possible number to guess for. We're gonna go with 10. I'm thinking of a number between one and 10. So what number am I thinking of? So I can see what the secret number is. I can see everything that's going on right here. I wanna say the secret number in this case, I'm gonna guess uh, three. And it's gonna go through. It's gonna say that number is smaller than my secret number. It was not the correct answer. And now you can see the attempt number is one. And we're gonna go through one more time. What number am I thinking of? I'm gonna say 11. I know that's obviously it can't be 11 because my max number is 10. I've already defined that. But just to go ahead and see what we get, that number is actually larger than our secret number. It's not the correct answer, and it's going to keep going through and asking me. We can see attempt number right here in the upper right is now imp incremented to, uh, to 2. And again, um, one thing to note is that we're not going to have this list of numbers right here showing if another user was actually working with our script. So in order to hide these for our final product what we want to do is go over here and uncheck each of our variables so now i have absolutely no idea what any of my variables are because i can't see them right there and they're not being reported on my stage and this is a true guessing game um, and that students is how you complete the second part of lab 2.4